been talking about, I said this is a unipolar neuron, this is a multipolar neuron. Let me, let me give you a little bit more detail. There's actually four structural classes of neurons based on the anatomy of the cell. The one we've been talking about, I'll blow it up a minute. The one we've been talking about is this multipolar neuron. This guy. Um, we can't repeat them on our slides. No, no, no. <laughs> so you've got, here's the soma. You've got a bunch of dendrites coming off, right? You've got one axon, which may have an axon collateral. Okay. And then you've got a bunch of axon terminals, each ending up with synaptic terminals, right? So most of your, um, most of your neurons are multipolar neurons, and that's why we usually talk about them first. We kind of studied those first and we kind of base everything else on this model. Um, in the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, multipolar neurons are the most common. And in your peripheral nervous system, your motor neurons are multipolar neurons. That's why I drew this one like this. So all of the, let's say motor, would that be afferent or efferent? Efferent, going out, right? So all of the efferent, signals that your body is carrying are all multipolar neurons, all of them. Well, there's probably one exception, but for our case, all of them. Yeah. All of them. All of them. Motor neurons. Neurons carrying motor or efferent information are multipolar neurons. Now, bipolar neurons, people with, that have bipolar personality don't have more of these. <laughs> Two things. <laughs> I bet you get that question, I guess. Yeah, well, I just try to anticipate, yeah. Bipolar, the reason it's called bi, bi means two, right? Yeah, correct. Because here's the song, right? There's one thing coming off the song, there's two things coming off the song. It's, it's coming off each side. Yeah, whereas in a multipolar neuron, you've got a whole bunch of. Come back there. You've got one axon and one, two, three. You've got a whole bunch of stuff that are connected to the. A whole bunch of things that are connected to the cell body, the cell. That's why it's called multi. Bipolar, there are just two things that touch the cell. But it can have a collateral off of the two. And now this, is, yeah, this axon could have an axon collateral. Right. Yeah. And it, it's still just a two axon. But it's, well, it's just a two process. Two process. Yeah, not axon because you only got right. one axon. Right. So the other one's not an axon. This is a dendrite. Basically what you have is you have a whole bunch of little dendrites that all merge into one big kind of dendrite. Instead of having separate dendrites coming in, all of these merge out here in the periphery and hit one spot on the cell. This is all input. This is all input portion. This is all output. But no matter how many collaterals on one axon, it's still the same. Excellent. That's correct. Now, these you're going to see, not in a lot of places, these are in kind of some of your special sense organs. So, so bipolar neurons are sensory neurons. Now, unipolar neurons, most of your sensory neurons are unipolar neurons. And what that is, is you have a bunch of dendrites that merge, and the axon actually starts, the dendrites are directly connected to the axon. So the axon goes from here to like there. Instead of the dendrites merging into one big process that hits the soma, these dendrites all merge together and hit the axon. The cell body is off to the side. And so there's only one thing connecting to the cell body, and that's why it's called unipolar. And that's all I risk thing. That's why when I drew my sensory neuron a while ago, I drew it like this. That's a unipolar neuron. From here to here is axon. The dendrites are just right there. Most of your sensory neurons, not your special senses, but all the general senses, pressure and pain and temperature and, and itch and those kind of things, those, that information is transmitted into your spinal cord and brain on unipolar neurons. And then you have the ones that are confused. Some textbooks don't even mention these. We know they're dendrites, we know they're axons, but when you look at them, we can't tell them apart. They're called anaxonic because, and which is a bad name because there is an axon, they have to send information out 
but they just can't tell which one of these things is the axon and which one's the difference. So those are these structural classes. Multipolar, unipolar, bipolar, and and axonic. Now, a sensory neuron is part of the afferent division, right? It's bringing sensory information into the central nervous system. Most of those are unipolar. In some of your special sense organs, you've got bipolar. So sensory neurons, most of them are unipolar. Some of them in special sense organs are bipolar. Motor neurons, all of them multipolar, are part of the efferent division. They are taking information out to some kind of effector. the neurons that are in between the sensory neurons and the motor neurons. Did you say multipolar? Most of your interneurons are multipolar. Those would be dendrites, right? Yeah. And that whole thing would be an axon. Now, I didn't put them up here, but I've had little dendrites here, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So those would be dendrites. All of that would be axon. Little dendrites. Axon. So if you touch something hot, the receptor sends a signal to the sensory neuron. It sends a signal to the interneuron, <laughs> and that sends a signal to the motor neuron. Which ships it out. Which sends a signal to the effector that says, pull your hand back. Are interneurons always in between? Yes. Interneurons, well, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that one. An interneuron is always between a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. Uh, in What's enter. Huh? Enter. Enter. But, remember, we can send off an axon collateral here. And skip it. And skip it. Oh, gee. But it can't go direct. Huh? Can't just connect directly sensory to motor? Sure. This, this, this axon collateral connects it directly from the sensory to the motor. Oh, but it can also send a signal. It can also synapse on an interneuron. Oh. So it can send them both. And that's the advantage of having axon collaterals. One neuron can synapse on one presynaptic neuron can synapse on many postsynaptic neurons via the axon collaterals. And in that, that what we call a withdrawal reflex, that when you touch something hard or you step on that, that collateral, when you have you have a monosynaptic reflex arc where you have the sensory neuron directly synapsing on the motor neuron. That's why you pull your hand back. But you have a polysynaptic reflex arc going on at the same time that this sensory neuron synapsed, synapsed on the interneuron, which synapsed on another neuron, which synapsed on another neuron. And that's why it takes a little bit longer for you to realize why you just pulled your hand back. All right, so interneurons are neurons that are between sensory neurons and motor neurons. You don't have to have an interneuron, like for in this particular synapse, right? But if you do have an interneuron, it's between here and here. Okay, so your sensory neurons are part of the afferent division, right? Afferent sensory. These are going to be, most of them are um, unipolar, some of them are bipolar because of the special senses. Motor neurons are going to be part of the efferent division. And then the interneurons are in the central nervous system. These interneurons are going to be in your brain and spine. What happens is the synapse between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron happens 
um, in the spinal cord. So basically, sensory neurons end in the central nervous system. Motor neurons begin in the central nervous system. But the axons of these neurons are in the peripheral nervous system. The inner neurons, all of the inner neurons is in the central nervous system. Now, one of the things I didn't talk about, do I have a picture of this? Yes, thank you, Google. Okay. <laughs> Unipolar neurons, okay? Unipolar neurons. All of the little cell bodies are stuck off to the side, right? Okay? And so when this sensory, when this, let's say this unipolar neuron, its little dendrites are down here in your foot. Okay? And so it's gonna, if you step on something or my socks curled up or <laughs> something I need to know about, okay, happens, then that's gonna stimulate the sensory neuron. The axon, which starts right there, right? In unipolars? The axon, that's going to go all the way up, all the way into my spinal cord. Down here. Now, this soma, the cell body of that, is going to be real close to my spinal cord. You follow me? Okay. And so what you have is all of those unipolar neurons that are coming in to your spinal cord, all of their little somas, are wrapped up together in what's called a sensory ganglia, or ganglion. Now, here's the spinal cord, okay? We'll come back to this a little bit later. Here's what you need to know about the spinal cord. Sensory information comes in the back of the spinal cord, in the dorsal side. Motor information goes out the front. And so this is the, the front of your spinal cord. This is the back side. Now see how this has got a bulge right there? Okay. That bulge, that is a ganglion. What's in there are all of the somas of the sensory neurons, the unipolar neurons that are bringing in information into the back side of the spinal cord. Motor information starts in here and comes out the front. So your motor neurons, their somas would be inside here. And then the axon would be coming out this way. If there is an interneuron in between the sensory and the motor, it's going to be right in here. Make so sure motor impulses, the, the motor neuron, that guy right there, the green one, okay, his soma and dendrites is going to be inside the. Uh, is going to be right in here. Yeah. And then the axon will come out and go out the nerves, out of the spinal cord, okay. out the front. But your terminals for your sensory is going to be inside, not its sum. Right there. The axon terminals for the sensory. Okay. The axon is going to be way the heck out here somewhere. It's going to come in. Its little cell body is going to be in this bulge, in the ganglion. And then that axon will continue, and the axon terminals will synapse on something inside the spinal cord, either directly onto a motor neuron or onto an interneuron in between. So the cell body is going to be inside the uh, the ganglion. Right. And so this is called the dorsal root ganglion. The reason that you don't have to have a ventral ganglion is because the somas of these motor neurons are where? Inside. inside. They're inside, exactly. You can have somatic sensory neurons and visceral sensory neurons. The somatic sensory neurons are going to carry information that we're generally aware of. Things like, uh, remember I told you to do this, okay, or do this, that proprioception, okay. Um, the, the general sensations, the, the touch, tickle, pain, pressure, those kind of things that we're normally aware of, what we consider our body, what we know about our body, um, that's somatic sensory information. Um, the, the environment out here. Make sense? Visceral sensory neurons monitor what's going on on the inside. The viscera, the guts. What your blood pressure is. How fast your heart is beating. Um, what your blood sugar level is. What your calcium level is. Okay. All of those things that we're generally not aware of, but that the central nervous system needs to know about. But all of that information, whether it's basically from outside the body or from inside the body, has to get into the spinal cord and most of it eventually up to the brain. Okay. 
fact, all of it goes to the brain, um, most of it we're not aware of. All right? Okay, now, central receptors, this kind of gets back to what's going on over here. You have all kind of different, uh, they can be separate cells that would actually stimulate a sensory neuron, or they can actually specialize structures, specialized dendrites, essentially, at the end of a sensory neuron. And you've got all kinds of sensory receptors. You've got receptors for pain. You've got receptors for temperature. You've got receptors for how the pressure in the walls of your arteries that measure blood pressure. You've got receptors for pH to, how, to figure out how acidic your stomach is. You've got receptors that detect the, the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood. So your receptors are basically broken down into three categories. Proprioceptors we've already talked about. That's the ones that monitor the limb position, right? Then the interoceptors and the extraroceptors, basically the interoceptors are what's going on inside, and the extraroceptors are what's going on outside. All right, so your extraroceptors and your proprioceptors, those are going to be receptors that send signal to your somatic sensory neurons. The interoceptors, where'd it go? <laughs> are going to be sending signals to your visceral sensory neurons. So interoceptors, okay, they're monitoring things that we're normally not aware of. These are things that are stimulating our visceral sensory neurons, our guts, what's going on in our organs. Now, if these signals get, I mean, when you're full, oh God, I over eight. So that information can get to our consciousness. <laughs> but what happens is we're actually full before we realize we're full. Do you know that? Yeah. When you, when you, as your bladder begins to fill, you don't notice it until it gets to a certain point, and then finally that, but that pressure information is being monitored. Right. And at my age, you're like, oh crap, I got to pee. Yeah. <laughs> so. Most of the time, these interoceptors, the information that these guys are detecting, doesn't get to our consciousness. But if those, if those signals get strong enough, what happens is you've got an inner neuron that says, okay, you need to do something about it. Make sense? Now, the extraroceptors, receptors, this is the stuff that we're generally aware of. The, the senses, the things that we can detect. This is your special, these are your special senses, as well as your general senses, touch and pressure and temperature and things like that. And then the proprioceptors, those are the ones that I just think are so cool, you know. Because you know where your arms are. You know. I know how many fingers I'm holding up. You know, I can't see them. Okay. So all of those sensory receptors, whether they're visceral sensory neurons or somatic sensory neurons, are part of the eight-parent division, right? Okay. So we'll pick up with motor neurons. 